Six months ago, we took Toyota's brand new 300 for a spin to test whether it was a real off-road vehicle or a soccer mum's car. And today, TJM have handed me the keys to this. One of the first heavily modified 300 series in Australia. They said, do your worst and push it to the limit, which is exactly what I'm about to do. When I first tested the 300 series, I was really surprised just how capable it was right out of the box. Now you gotta keep in mind, it wasn't modified, it had no aftermarket accessories, and there was a couple of shortcomings that really held it back. But today things are a little bit different because this 300 has the entire TJM catalog thrown at it. And have a go at that hill. That's a proper hill of consequence. I've driven up here before in really modified four wheel drives and it's always been a bit of a struggle. So, can't wait to get into this one. Now if I remember back to when I first tested a 300 series off-road, I was really impressed on how the thing drove. I mean, nothing's really changed. The 300 is really, really capable. But where I, I think the biggest shortfalls were, it had this great big front bumper that I was really worried about damaging off-road because it stuck out and didn't have the clearance I need. Now as soon as you start to modify the vehicle like this, you start to take away any of those issues and it becomes even more capable. I'm not afraid to point this thing on really tough tracks. Now, of course this one's running a TJM Outback Bull Bar. Now there's a couple of cool things I'd like to draw your attention to because it's a really well designed bar. Not only does it look good, but it's been tested and developed right here in Australia. Now, one thing that I think is very impressive, underneath it's actually got two recovery points and they're rated to eight ton. One thing you might not know about the 300s, they have a water to air intercooler, which requires its airflow from the front passenger and driver side of the big 300s grill. See these big openings and mesh in the bar? Well, TJM have actually designed the bar to allow for a heap of air to flow to the inner cooler, which is super clever. I've got to be really honest with you, driving a 300 series up a hill like this is not something I'd do unless I had some decent bar work on it. And that's exactly what this vehicle's got. It's got a front bar, of course. It's got some rails, brush bars, side steps, AirTech snorkel. If I take you on the back, you're going to like this. This is a prototype rear bar. So it's really cool to see TJM making rear bars again. They haven't made one since the 100 series. This one, of course, has got swingaways for the spare tire, jerry can, all that sort of stuff. And I reckon it looks pretty decent too. I can't wait to see the final outcome, but it's good to see when you've got a vehicle with the right bar work, you can take into places just like this. I think one of the biggest shortcomings in a stock 300 is the fact that its bumpers hang really low. So your chances of doing damage off-road is quite high. It's not the fact that the vehicle won't go there, it's you don't want to take it, fear you're going to cave that front or rear bumper in. Now this one obviously has got a couple of inches of lift and it's fitted with a front and rear bar. And I'm pretty keen to see where we can drive this thing. First up we've got this doozy of a hill climb in Kenilworth. Traction aids on, having bar work front and rear. This thing, <laughs> it's a bit of an animal. Okay, time to really put a thrill of paces. Up ahead, we've got a super steep, super rutted out track with lots of loose gravel. <laughs> Let's see how the big 300 goes. This is a serious hill, so I'm very, very keen to see how it drives up here. I'd never take a new car up this one. I'd only ever driven modified cars on this particular hill. Tell you what, this thing is pretty capable. <laughs> well, that's incredible. It's just eating it up. With the stock 300, I wouldn't have got halfway up without causing damage. It's pretty impressive. So this bit here is super steep and technical. Big rock step, and you gotta try and straddle this rut the best you can. Good as that. <laughs> that was, you know, to be honest with you, it did it easy. Okay, challenge number three. Let's step it up a notch. 
The TJM300 is certainly capable, but I know this hill and I know plenty of modified four-wheel drives that struggle on it. Well, this is quite a serious little hill, this one. what this vehicle can do. so good to drive a bog stock version of a four wheel drive and then a fully modified one back to back. Well, it goes to show, you know, you set a vehicle up properly and it's amazing what it can do. This is a brand new vehicle, it's got less than 2000 k's on the clock, super shiny and uh, it's still shiny and that's because it does have decent bar work which is amazing. What it's doing on this track, far out, far out, it's just so capable, you get the right mods and um, you know, you, you can come to places like this and even in a family tourer drive some very very impressive tracks i've got to say on tracks like this to have a front bar means a difference between taking a line you normally wouldn't do a very confident line because you know you're not going to damage that front bumper it's got the protection in the places where you need it Just like that, up she goes. Coming down a hill like this, you can really feel that suspension start to articulate. I mean, this is a pretty gnarly hill. Feels better, slightly, slightly better. That's better. <laughs> This is just as sketchy going down as it is going up. I mean, this is a proper hill. I mean, it's hard sometimes when we're filming these things to make them look steep, but this is like near vertical. You might have seen, I lifted a bit of a wheel there in the back. And uh, we sure knew about that one. It's so hard when it's not your vehicle, but I'm putting all my faith in the, in the products that this vehicle's got, it's modified. This 300 is a weapon. Just goes to show that a few key mods and you can turn a soccer mum's car into an off-road animal. Well, I've got to say, the 300 series off-road is a bit of an animal. I mean, when they're stock sure, there's a fair few limitations. They don't have a lot of clearance and you're a bit worried about punching in that front and rear bumper. But as soon as you get a few mods on it like this one here, they turn into complete off-road machines. The way it drove up some of those hills back in the bush there, it really, really amazed me. This thing, I could sit back in a leather chair and just basically it guided itself up some of those hills. And I wasn't afraid to throw it around because it had all the protection it needs. Would I buy one? I don't know, the verdict's still out. Let us know in the comments what you'd do. Would you have one of these in your driveway? I reckon if it looked like this, I could see myself owning one of these. Anyway, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time out on the tracks. Don't miss the rest of our golf adventure coming soon to YouTube.
we push on to experience some of Australia's most remote fishing. I got another one. Yeah. And we've still got 60 k's to go out to the coast through some pretty rough roads. Not to put any pressure on roofs down there. Got to be a pretty darn good well. We get trapped by rising tides. It looks like a proper river. This has changed everything. And explore the magic that is the rest of Lorella Springs. It's got to be one of the single most incredible things I've ever seen.